Hello. Um, when I was diagnosed, I remember there being this um, very lucid, almost ethereal kind of, it just came over me basically. I was in a lucid state where I was sat there looking at my mum, my uh, partner Becky, and the oncologist who was describing to me how I was going to die and how long it might take um, even with uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy and I was just sat there totally aware of what was going on around me looking at both Becky and my mother and just kind of seeing them in their entirety and their whole being and understanding not even understanding, just feeling at peace in a sense. You know, like I should have been feeling my life is over and I've got no hope. <laughs> but all I felt was peace, a kind of peace within it. You know, I was being told I was going to die and yet I was still alive. I was still there. I was still able to see and feel and, and think and be myself. And I resolved in myself that I was going to, I was going to live, that I am living, and I'm going to live my life with love, and I'm going to live for other people, and I'm going to live for myself. I made all these choices in that instant, and then uh, it took me. Well, I had that meeting where I was told, you know, this is what you can do. We'll set up your radiotherapy and chemotherapy schedules, and. And I just did research for, for days on end. I just spent all my time doing research uh, for till 4 a.m. every every night on a little laptop, just figuring out my next step. I was like, you know, I was brought up on homeopathy and and uh, supposed healthy eating in a vegetarian diet. And I was like, I can I can figure something out, you know. I've got, got the uh, the intelligence. I've got to find something. I will. And because I was receptive to that and I was open to finding something, all this time that I spent looking, I found this glimmer of hope in the ketogenic diet. And back then, seven years ago, there wasn't very much information about um, glucose and brain tumors and ketogenic diets and uh, paleo carnivore diets. There was just little tidbits, little bits of information that you had to piece together for yourself. And I just figured it myself, you know, I found... Um, as a keto, they're like a charity that helps children with epilepsy in London. And I just said, you know, Matthew's friend, that's what they're called. And I went, mm, if it works for people with epilepsy and having a brain tumor, I have epilepsy, um, it should work for me, you know, at least as a therapy to reduce my seizures. So when I had that meeting with the oncologist and I said, what do you think about the ketogenic diet? She said, I don't think it will work. You know, there's no evidence suggesting that it will or can help you. Yes, it helps people with epilepsy and that. And that's all I can say. Um, I remember specifically the day I had my radiotherapy screening, uh, mask fitting. I was, uh, had a full man beard, really, really fluffy beard. And I went in. Um, no one had told me you've got to be clean shaven so we can fit the mask to your face. Uh, I had no information about what was going to happen that day. Just come to the meeting. Um, so they had to find some some standard stationary scissors to try and hack most of my beard off so that I could fit this mask. And just <laughs> to start with, it was already an unpleasant uh, experience. And then. Um, Went to have the mask fitted on the little table they put you on for the radio, radiation treatments. And I, uh, as I was lying there, attached to this table by this piece of plastic, I just felt sick to the core. I felt like I cannot do this. I need to ask some questions. I need to figure out how is, this is going to affect my life and my health and my mental state, you know, because that's the one thing that I wanted to be strong in is my mind. So I said, can I speak to my oncologist? Because I'm unsure about this. And when I spoke to her, I said, you know, I just want to know some things. And I want to know if this is going to give me longevity, a long life. And she said to me, I, I can't promise you anything. I can't give you any. The only thing I can tell you is that you would, with radiation and chemo, um, maximum survival time is about 12, 12 to 15 months. 
I said, okay, what about without? And she said, well, because of your health, your general health, six to nine months, where the medium was like three to six. And I just said, well, this isn't good enough. You know, I want to live a long life and I have to make this decision for myself. So I'm going to choose to decline chemo radiotherapy. And I didn't actually consult with anyone in my family. I just said, this is what I'm doing. And I'm, I stuck to it. And um, she said, well, I, I wish you all the best, but um, you know, I say, your prognosis, prognosis without our treatments are gonna be six to nine months. I said, well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> And um, from that day on, I kind of just like, I took a leading role in my own health. I just decided that this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be responsible for myself. I'm gonna take full control. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out because, you know, at the end of the day, just because I have cancer doesn't mean I can put my life in someone else's hands. Um, you know, I figured out over seven years of <laughs> surviving a terminal diagnosis that was inoperable that things can happen they can change everything you know inoperable tumor that turned into an operable tumor in 2017 uh, it changed shape or uh, they, there was more experience in removing brain tumors so they were more comfortable you know the technology is more advanced so, you know in you know who knows if i survived seven more years by then they might have a cure that's my plan, is to be around, to be a guinea pig for all these things. Metabolic health, um, making my own choices and surviving my own way. That, <laughs> you know, this could come about. I could, I could basically end up being cured of this and actually living the long life that I always dreamed of. The thing is, like, you know, most people that are diagnosed, they have these... It's in the forefront of their mind. It's constant fear that they're going to die. And I've seen to, I, through my choices and my actions, I have become more comfortable in the fact that death is always an option. It's, it's, it's kind of inevitable. So if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But you need to learn to accept your fear and embrace it and understand it and then slowly but surely allow it to be what it is. You know, you can start noticing that fear is coming, but it's just a story. It's just something you're making up essentially. Because <laughs> an emotion, yeah, it has this attachment in our thoughts. We interpret it a certain way, but we can also interpret it a positive way. You can say, so I was given cancer for a reason, to make me look at life differently, to learn to experience life in a different way. And that's what I've done, I feel, you know. And I'm not saying all these things to say that it's possible for everybody. I mean, it is possible for everybody. It's just a choice to actively do it, you know. Stop being the victim of your, your experience and actually learn to control your experience in a, in a big way embrace it and then use that will to live to evolve with it you know i've it's all started with choice you know you just got to make these tough really fucking hard choices but you got to make them in yourself it's all well and good asking people for their opinion but when you get stuck on what they want you don't think about what you want and what you want is purely to live you know, I am living right now. And that's my message today. It was a long-winded message, but I'm just saying... <laughs> like, uh, just, just commit something out loud. Just say to yourself and trust in what you're saying. Just say, I will live. I am living. You know, be it for your family, be it for yourself. But make sure that it's also for you, you know. Living for other people isn't really a goal that we attain. We are very self-full beings. We are full of self. So every thought and action we do is for ourselves, our benefit. So make a choice that is for your benefit. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know, it doesn't matter what you choose, as long as you're, you trust in your decision and you're confident in yourself. And that way you go out fighting with every last fucking breath, you know, being as strong as you can be because you're making choices for you and no one else. Some might call that arrogance, but I see it as being full of self. Be fully aware of what you want in life.
and that's what we got to do as cancer warriors uh, the fighting spirit is everything and just being being gnarly <laughs> you know what I'm saying so yeah that's, that's all I'm going to say that's 10 minutes of me talking about nothing um, <laughs> essentially because all of this means nothing it's the blip in the existence of everybody on this planet. So live life and uh, one love. Big love to everybody. <laughs>